Hello everybody, I am Dr. Joshila Grace from CSE Department, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. I am here to handle inheritance in Java. Before moving on to the topic of inheritance in Java, in general life what is inheritance? So here in this picture you can view that you have a father and a mother. The father and mother is going to have a child. The child is going to inherit all the properties of the father and mother and child will have its own property also. So this is what is our general life. So now we will move on to what is inheritance in Java. In case of Java, we are going to work out with classes. So you have a class which is having several properties. The class properties can be inherited in your in some other class which is going to derive the base class. So this property is whatever we are going to inherit we can be using it with the object which has been created for your derived class. So that is what it is said. It is a mechanism in which one object acquires all the properties and behaviors of your parent object. So the parent class or the contents of your parents class can be inherited in the child, in the child class or the derived class by just using an object that has been created. So this helps in reusing the particular class again. So these are the various terminologies which is going to be seen throughout your inheritance. Superclass, subclass and reusability. So what is superclass? The main base class where we are going to have the general properties which has been used or which is going to be used by many other classes. You say that as your superclass. This superclass you can also call it as base class or parent class. The properties of the superclass can be used by all the subclasses. Subclasses is the one which is going to take up the properties of your base class and we are going to use additional properties in your subclasses also. So these subclasses you can otherwise call it as derived class or child class. Reusability. The purpose of mainly using these inheritances we are reusing the properties of the base class and the subclass in the following classes wherever necessary. We are not going to repeatedly write the particular codes or we are not going to have the class being declared, defined, everything again and again. We are just going to inherit the properties and we will be using all the properties of your base class inside your derived class. So moving on to the types of inheritance, there are basically three types of inheritance given here. So in case of Java, we have single inheritance, multi-level inheritance and hierarchical inheritance. In case of single level inheritance, you will have only two classes. The first class you say it as a base class and the next class you tell it as a derived class. All the properties of your base class can be used by your derived class and derived class can have additional properties also. So this is said to be your multi-level inheritance. In case of multi-level inheritance, we will be having the same setup as your single inheritance but the level goes on. Each and every level you will inherit the properties of your previous class. So if you see the class A is said to be your super class, class B is going to inherit the properties of class A. So class B will have class A's property as well as its own property. Class B is going to have class A's property as well as its own property. Class C will be inheriting the property of class B. So it means class C is not going to have only class B's property. It will have the properties of your class A also. So this is how the code is being reused again and again. So when you talk about your hierarchical inheritance, you have a single super class or a base class. The property of this base class can be used by many other classes, many other individual classes. So class B can contain the property or can use the property of class A. Similarly, class C can use the property of class A. Class B and class C are not interconnected. They have their own properties. So this slide shows about the syntax of how your single inheritance, your multi-level inheritance and the hierarchical inheritance works. This is your single level inheritance. So the single level inheritance, we will be using a keyword called extends. So this only defines that this is a derived class. 
class public class a says it is a super class whenever you have a class like this st stand alone class you can say it is a super class we make the class as public so that it can be inherited to some other class followed by you have a class which is going to be the derived class in my example it says b is my derived class so i am naming the class as b extends extends is a keyword that has been used in order to inherit the properties of a a is my base class so this is the syntax how do i give for single inheritance similarly for multi level inheritance we have already seen the diagram of three levels so we are going to have the super class the base class which is named as a so for a we have created the class as public class keyword a within brackets within your curly brackets we will be giving all the properties of your class a the properties of your base class a can be used inside your derived class which is nothing but b by using public class b extends extends is the keyword which is going to be used to inherit the property of class a which is your base class or the super class so you will have its own property the b will be having its own property given inside the curly brackets followed by you have the next level of class in your multi level inheritance so that is public class c which extends b so we already know that b is going to extend the property of a and b will have its own property c is going to extend b it means so totally c is going to have all the properties of a b as well as its own property this is about your multi level inheritance the last one is your hierarchical inheritance so this is the diagram we have seen in the previous line so here we are going to have only one super class this super class or the base class we are going to inherit the property in two derived classes so it can be as many as you want so as many class as you want you can make it as a derived class so for example i have just given two so here i have public class keyword a is my class name that is my super class name it has its own properties given here followed by i have class b which is being given public class b extends the property of a so a is my base class that property it is going to extend and b will have its own properties followed by i have class c so public class c extends a which is going to extend the super class the difference is you are going to extend the super class here and it is going to have its own property the thing what we have to make a note here is your class b and class c are individual classes they don't have any connection they are just using the property of class a so this is a simple example to show about single inheritance so as we all know what is single inheritance what is the keyword we are supposed to use for single inheritance this is easier this is a very simple program given if you see here i have a class being given as class first so inside this class i have initialized two variables a and b i have a function being defined as fn1 i have initialized the values for a and b as 100 and 500 so this is my base class the property of this base class i am trying to use in my derived class the derived class i am going to give the name for my derived class as second so if you see here i say this as a derived class because i have extends keyword here class second is my derived class name extends is the keyword used for inheritance followed by first first is nothing but my base class so that class properties i'm using it here here i'm initializing an integer called c and using that i'm going to use a function called fn2 c is equal to a plus b which is nothing but it is going to add the values of a and b which is been given in my base class if you see here i don't initialize any value for my a and b here this a and b values are taken up from the properties of my base class this is how i will be able to use the property of my base class inside my derived class followed by i am going to just print the statement sum is equal to and the c value is going to be printed that is the sum value is going to be printed i have one more class to contain my main function always my java program will have main function as public static void main within bracket string args so inside the first line is nothing but the object creation even though i have two classes given here base class and a derived class it is enough i create an object for my derived class i can use the properties of base class as well as derived class
that is the one big advantage which can be given for inheritance. I am just going to create an object for my derived class and I will be using the properties of base class and derived class. So, object for derived class is second which is nothing but my derived class name followed by my object equal to new keyword second is again the class name derived class name brackets open close semicolon followed by the object dot fn1 fn1 is going to be your first base class function though so this is going to be called where a is going to be taken up as 100 b is going to be taken up as 500 followed by os dot fn2 fn2 is my function which is present in my derived class so for both the functions i am going to use only one object that is my derived class object so object name dot fn2 will automatically calculate my sum and it is going to print the output so the output will be given as sum is equal to 600 the next example tells about multi level inheritance so in case of multi level inheritance we already saw in our example we have three levels so you can have any number of levels since it is an example i have just given it as three levels so in three levels if you see i have the first class which is named as class first this is my base class so this base class is going to have one function called as fn1 which is named as which is going to contain a is equal to 100 followed by i have the next class which is going to be the second class which extends the property of first the program is very simple if you go through it is very easy the same addition program i have just given it modified in the form of multi level inheritance where you have the first class which is going to have a function called as fn1 which is going to assume the value a to be 100 followed by the second is my derived class which extends the property of first the keyword extends is used first is my base class name followed by i am going to have the function inside this which is named as fn2 and we are going to initialize the value as b is equal to 500 so two values we have initialized this is the first level this is the second level then third level third level of class which is named as third extends second is my previous level class so that is going to be acting as my base class previous level second class is going to act as my base class for third second was a derived class for first so second is going to have properties of first second now third is going to have its own property as well as the two properties of first and second so now i am going to add using a function called as fn3 c is equal to i am going to give it as c is equal to a plus b and i am going to print the sum as 600 i have a separate class given for my main function so this is my class basic public static void main is my main function always then I create an object for my last derived class. Even though I have three classes, I will create object just for my last derived class. I would be able to use the property of first. I will be able to use the property of second as well as third. So that is what I have used os.fn1, os.fn2, os.fn3. So like this, I will be able to call out all the functions present in all the classes. The last one is your hierarchical inheritance. So in case of hierarchical inheritance, as we said, we have one single base class and any number of derived class. So I have a base class which is named as class first. The same thing I have given, I have a function which is going to have values of A as 100, B as 500. I have two sets of derived class. If you could see here, I have two sets of derived class. Both are going to derive the properties of first. So if you see, I have class second extends first. The next is class third extends first. Both are going to derive the properties of my base class first. Now in my second derived class, I can find a function which is named as fn2. Difference is being given as a minus b. So the difference is going to be calculated and going to be printed. This a and b values I'm going to take up from my base class. Then I have the third class which is nothing but derived class of first. So I am going to have a function which is named as fn3 sum is equal to a plus b where I am going to add the values of a and b which was present in my first base class and I am going to print it. So I have given three classes here. You can have any number of derived class for one base class. The last class which is going to contain the main function, main function is always given as public static void main string ARGS. 
inside I will be creating two objects because two derived class are two individual classes. They need two separate objects to access B as well as A, similarly C as well as A. So in that case, in my example, my base class is first and the second is my derived class. So I create an object for my derived class second and I create an object for my derived class third. The second object is given as OS1, the third object is given as OS2. OS1.fn1 will call the function which is present in my base class and I can also use OS1 to call the function in my derived class second. The object OS1 would be able to use the properties of class first as well as class second. Then OS2 is an object I have created for third. By using the object of third, I would be able to call for the function which is present in my base class as well as the third class that is my derived class. So I am calling out the function OS2.fn1 which is my base class and OS2.fn3 which is my derived class third. So the functions are being called and the outputs is given as difference is equal to minus 400, sum is equal to 600. Thank you.